What's up, everybody? Francis here from Heads Up Display, and I'm here with Michael Bass, uh, president of HVZ. And uh, <laughs> we're here to talk about HVZ as an org. Um, yeah. So, so Bass, tell me, what exactly is HVZ? So, in its simplest form, HVZ is a uh -huh. week-long game of zombie tag played with Nerf guns and a bunch of people across campus. Yeah. Just, so, what are the rules? Um, basically, everybody who signs up for the game will start out as a human, except for people that apply early on to be the alpha zombies. Mm -hmm. And we go through a process with them, making sure they know rules and stuff, and we'll select them. And they're pretty much the progenitors of the horde. They're the modified zombies. They have mm -hmm. much lower stun timers, and they're looked at by the players as sort of leaders of the zombie horde. Okay. Um, the game itself is played between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m., where we usually have a mission slash objective based gameplay thing that starts at 6 p.m. every night, and we'll post locations on our Facebook page for mm -hmm. all of that. Uh, links will be in the description down below. But um, so tell me, how how can you identify like the alpha zombies versus just the regular zombies? So. Uh, human, well, I'll, I'll start with just identifiers. Mm -hmm. um, human will have a lime green armband, should have grabbed it from the thing, mm -hmm. uh, whatever. <laughs> and once you become a zombie, by getting attacked by a zombie, you'll put that around your head, it's a bandana, it should fit around your head, mm -hmm. um, or strip of cloth, you know, anything yeah. lime green that is thick enough that we can tell that you are what you are. Alpha zombies are provided a bright lime green, mm -hmm. yellowish t-shirt by us, okay. that say, Alpha and have an alpha symbol, and sometimes say zombie, and then they can customize it however they want on the back for whoever they are. Okay. And so you see somebody in a lime green t-shirt, you're like, zombie, I see him. Yes. So. That's good. They're really easy to spot. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you were talking about um, like stun timers. How do you know uh, a person's stun timers? So. When a zombie gets shot, they'll take their bandana around their head and they'll put it around their neck. Mm -hmm. And that means that they're stunned and their stun timer, they keep track of it themselves. Uh, the stun timers for every day start, you know, alpha zombies at one minute on Monday and mm -hmm. normal zombies at 10 minutes. And then as the days progress, we'll change those around and those will all get also posted on the Facebook. But mm -hmm. they're, they're usually just one minute shifts per day to where uh, at the end of the week, the normal zombies will be at five or six, and the alpha zombies will be at four or five. Mm -hmm. So it gets closer and closer to equaling out toward the end. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, but by the rules or by courtesy sort of thing, if you ask a zombie what their stun timer is, they're supposed to tell you. Just straight up. You know, basic rule lie. number one for the game is don't be a douchebag. And so <laughs> yeah. if, if you walk up to a zombie and you're like, hey, what's uh -huh. your stun timer? They're like, oh, I got like two or three minutes left. You know, something yeah. close to that. I've seen people spawn in a minute late. I've seen people spawn in 30 seconds early. Like, it doesn't matter too much when mm -hmm. it's 10 minutes. But yeah. like, you know, we try to keep it as fair as possible. Okay. So in order to play, uh, do you have to sign up for the event? The, like, the, the whole time signups are open or can you join like the week of the you event? You can. We prefer that you do it during registration week just because if we had everybody signing up while we're also trying to be referees for a game, it puts a lot of stress on us and we also still have classes. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you will definitely allow people that are like, hey, I saw you guys running around with Nerf guns, that looks fun. Can I join in? We'll be like, mm -hmm. yeah, dude, sure. 100%. They, they don't just join as zombies immediately and be like, okay. Uh, well, it depends on the day. Usually, mm -hmm. it really depends, but most of the time after Tuesday, we're like, okay, everybody's signing up now zombie because we don't want to take away the people who lived mm -hmm. through the first two days. We don't want to take that away from them yeah. by just telling people, oh, go be a human. Okay. I mean, if we aren't seeing enough people playing, that may happen. It just mm -hmm. depends. Um, so in order to join, do you need to own like several Nerf guns? Um, no, actually. We've had quite a few players that didn't own any Nerf guns. Mm -hmm. um, I personally... I own a lot of them, so I will usually lend out a Nerf gun or two mm -hmm. at the beginning of the week, provided I get it back at the end of the week. 
um, haven't had anything go missing yet, which is great. But I know there are other people who will do that, or they'll sell off Nerf guns, or mm -hmm. you know, you can also play with balled up clean socks that if you hit a zombie with them, they are oh, okay. also in effect stunned. Mm -hmm. Or you can just outrun people. Okay. I know we before we were talking about you can't modify guns because of um, campus police laws. Uh, what about for modifying like socks with like just a bunch of? Um, um, so pretty much socks were okay with like things that are put in place to keep them, you know, mm -hmm. socks. But they're they're supposed to be, you know, ninety nine point nine nine percent sock mm -hmm. or other clothy material. Mm -hmm. So like if you take a t-shirt, rip a sleeve off, mm -hmm. tie it in a knot, and can throw that at somebody, I'm fine with that. It's mm -hmm. still cloth, it's not gonna hurt anybody. Mm -hmm. If you put a rock in the middle of your sock, that's not cool. Yeah. Um, if you start with a sock and then make a duct tape ball, that's not cool. But if you take, you know, one little mm -hmm. strip of scotch tape or electrical tape and tie it around that, I haven't seen that cause any problems. Mm -hmm. um, I've had people take a couple of rubber bands and wrap it around the sock, as long as, mm -hmm. like, it's not making the thing hit hard and you're not really changing the density of the object. Mm -hmm. I don't think that it matters and until a problem arises, police doesn't care. Mm -hmm. That's that's pretty good. There, there must be a lot of planning going into that. Oh yeah. Um, we do two or three meetings as the moderator group mm -hmm. that we will meet with grounds use and maintenance and police department before every game, make sure everything's set out properly, we have proper rules, we're abiding by their guidelines and set up a game date with them and make sure that everybody admin wise mm -hmm. knows what's going on so they don't just see hoodlums with guns. Yeah. Uh, that, would, that would be probably bad. <laughs> yeah. all, all of a sudden just the neighborhood SWAT team just comes by again and we're <laughs> oh like, no, no. We had that happen once. It was, a, it was a fun story. I wasn't a moderator at the time. I was mm -hmm. just a dude playing the game. Yeah. We uh, had a SWAT van roll up to Holden Hall because some people took guns, stuck them in their hoodie, and ran through Holden like this. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> and for any reason, it's probably a bad idea. Just saying. That's pretty bad. We ask that you conceal your weaponry in academic buildings, but by that mm -hmm. we mean like stick it in your backpack or mm -hmm. like hide it well. Don't. Yeah. Because a gun-shaped thing sticking out of a pocket looks more like a gun than a purple thing with an orange tip. Yeah. So. At least it's clear out in the open. <laughs> um, what you mentioned, like, inside buildings, are those, like, your safe zones in terms of, like, we do not yeah. play inside? So, so we have a difference between safe zones and no-play zones. Mm -hmm. um, no-play zones are, like, autism research for obvious reasons, child development center yeah. for same obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. The alumni pavilions have asked us not to conduct play around there, but they're like way far off, so it doesn't really yeah. do anything. Um, inside buildings is no play, just because you know close combat is bad. Um, yeah. You know, obviously shooting at people indoors with faculty and staff mm -hmm. and non-players running around, just too much, mm -hmm. too much going on in such a closed space. Um, but safe zones are a difference of. You get a door that you can open, mm -hmm. and 15 feet from that doorway is a safe zone. So, like, okay. the entire radius around mm -hmm. that doorway. And, you know, it's 15 feet, give or take mm -hmm. a little bit. We usually go up to some, you know, super visible physical marker that we yeah. can all see. Or we'll, like, say, this line is the one we can't cross or whatever. I see. And so that'll be the safe zone where... You know, it's mostly there so you can walk into the safe zone, not be in the building, put your stuff up, go inside. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, that's where also zombies spawn up once they're stunned. Okay. So once they get their timer done, they can yeah. go put their headband back on if they're in a safe zone and walk out. That's why, like, you you can't have survivors just staying in the safe zone. <laughs> we've, had, we've had safe zone camping a lot, but usually it just doesn't work. I mean... You're, you're safe in there and you can shoot zombies out of it, that's fine. We've had a couple of people post up at doors and just run protection. Yeah. But like, at the same time, you'll get bored just sitting there doing nothing. Everybody else will get bored and move on as zombies. <laughs> They'll just walk off and go try to kill somebody else. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. there's almost nobody that's high profile enough for somebody to camp their building for an hour. Mm. And so speaking of the community, it feels like 
to organize something this big, you really need like the moderators and everyone to kind of have like a some sort of honor system going around. Yeah, um, and that's that's where we get back to rule number one: don't be a douchebag. Um, <laughs> it's it's pretty much like we're it's a game mm -hmm. in essence. Like we're playing tag with Nerf guns on a college campus. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people see that as, you know, we're a bunch of children running around with Nerf guns, can't let go of the past, whatever. Mm -hmm. I see it as a good way to de-stress, but at the same time, if you are taking a game too seriously, mm -hmm. you remove the fun for yourself and you remove the fun for other people and it just becomes a chore for us to run and something that people want nothing to do with and so it just dies. Yeah. Um, and so we try to steer away from that as much as possible to where like, mm -hmm. you know, if we see zombies camping humans for way too long will either you know mount a rescue mission with a bunch of humans and be like oh we're gonna kill all the zombies save this human mm -hmm. or will if it comes to it we'll tell the zombies to bugger off okay so when's your next event and how often is it um so we play once a semester mm -hmm. we are meeting actually tomorrow to uh, that's Friday, just to actually take the video. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, no, um, it'll it'll be up by maybe sometime next week. Or, okay. Uh, yeah, so this meeting will already taken place by the time that mm -hmm. happens. But um, we're meeting to get all of our schedules as moderators built mm -hmm. around it because we have to have, you know, as many of us present as we can so mm -hmm. we can run the game most efficiently. And then we have to take that to grounds use to submit it there and mm -hmm. maintenance will be in the same meeting as that. And if they say, yeah, you're good to go, which, mm -hmm. you know, we haven't had any problems anywhere recently, mm -hmm. then we can actually put that date out and say, hey, these are the dates. Um, we're probably shooting last week of March to first couple weeks of April. So mm -hmm. one of those three weeks probably might skew from that a little, but try to stay away from spring break because yeah. if we have Ridge Week before spring break and then a thing of nothing and then the game, some people will forget and will forget and mm -hmm. I'll forget. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we don't want that to happen. Nah. But uh, thank you, Bess, for uh, joining me on this uh, interview. Uh, is there anything that you'd like to uh, say to uh, any of the potential HVZ uh, recruits? Yeah, well, I mean... The last thing about it is we don't charge anything to play. No, I can't buy your Nerf guns for you. I'm a student, but <laughs> I mean, obviously you don't need Nerf guns. You can start out as a zombie if you want, mm -hmm. um, but we don't charge anything to play. We provide you with a super swag and wristband. Um, and most importantly, you don't have to play all the time. Like you just show up and play when you want to. It's a great, great way to meet friends and blow off a lot of steam yes. late in the semester. So do it, sign up, uh, dates will be posted on whatever Facebook page I decide to post it on, probably all of them, but don't worry about it. <laughs> awesome, so I'm gonna link the HVZ group if you're interested in looking for more information. And until next time, I will see you in the next video.